Hello everyone, welcome to your Photoshop challenge. My name is Wade Acuff. I am an animator, illustrator, um, and artist. Uh, today we're going to be talking about composition and uh, designing with intent and using two compositional strategies to do that. Um, it's easy for us to get wrapped up into the technique side of creating art or design, uh, but there is a bigger picture that needs to be talked about with composition. Uh, and it's the how should we or how could we create a composition. And, uh, and, and for our purposes today, composition is the uh, visual arrangement of, uh, uh, it's the arrangement of visual elements within a piece of artwork. Um, so that's going to be the basics for this. Uh, if, the, if you want to uh, get the source file, it is down below in the description. And what we're going to do is going to show you uh, a little bit uh, through... Uh, examples how to break things down uh, but then also at the end we're going to do a little bit of uh, compositing ourselves um, so uh, let's uh, jump into the source file um, again we don't really need the intro uh, the little prompt here um, and uh, there's way too much about com uh, composition that we um, that we can't cover in this amount of time uh, but we're going to do what we can with just these two uh, and I want to jump right into this with um, uh, using the rule of thirds uh, that's the first strategy we're going to talk about uh, this uh, this strategy is just simply breaking down uh, the canvas into thirds and using the intersecting uh, segments to place your focal points uh, it can allow the eye to travel through a space, uh, and it can keep the conversation active within a piece. So jumping right into it uh, with uh, Sparth, this is uh, concept artist Sparth, um, and we have, what we've done here is already broken this down into thirds, and we're just going to talk a little bit about uh, what's happening here in this image. Uh, so for me, the ship is the focal point. Uh, first, I want to define these thirds. Uh, he, here are the cross sections we're talking about. But we also have these thirds. Uh, so that's just of note, just to make sure that that's clearly communicated. But this allows you to uh, go ahead and start placing things in uh, areas of intent uh, or areas that will let you uh, essentially have a conversation. The way I like to think about this is these are compositional conversation starters. It's where you put the, uh, the most interesting topic uh, or uh, item or whatever you're wanting to discuss in your piece um, and you place it in these areas. It's not a hard and fast rule. It's just a guide. Uh, so you can always kind of mix and match things. Uh, but let's see what's happening in this one. Uh, uh, I'm going to kind of follow the way the eye is led through this. We have this tiny little figure down here, and the way my eye is led through this is like this. So we get this uh, landmark. In this case, it's a building uh, that kind of says, hey, this is an urban area. Uh, there is this contrast, high contrast area, which is another part of composition. We're not going to be able to talk about everything, but there's balance and composition uh, contrast going on here. Uh, then I'm, my eye is led up. To this. Uh, don't forget there is also a giant yellow pyramid that is pointing us to our um, uh, our focal point. But then there's also this little nugget over here that is just uh, saying, hey, the, this area is active. There's another ship flying around. Uh, we, you know, we get some more detail of that. But uh, I'm not saying Sparth used this, put this grid down and made this, but this uh, does apply to the rule of thirds. Um, but uh, the next little uh, example here, let me clear this out. Uh, and this does cross over multiple genres. Uh, this is not something that, uh, you know, is specifically to uh, illustrators. This is for film, video games, uh, design, website, I mean, you, you name it. Uh, so the, here's a, another example. This is a, the um, Darjeeling Limited. Uh, it's a Wes Anderson film. In this shot, we are tracking or they're dollying, dollying the camera. So this point of interest stays in the frame at the exact same point throughout. 
uh, there's clearly a conversation of these uh, characters trying to make it to this train. Um, and this is another note here that the uh, uh, traditionally you can use these thirds, the horizontal thirds, and it could be vertical thirds, uh, to place your uh, horizon line. Uh, but in this case, it's used right, I mean, it's dead center on this rail. Uh, and this is just a, this, this top area isn't on a third, but I just wanted to note that this is a framing. This is creating a frame within a frame between these two. And that's a good way of keeping the action, like here, follow this line. Uh, keeps your eye pleased throughout the entire shot. Uh, I'm going to delete that. Moving on to the next one. So this is uh, a video game. It's called The Last of Us. Uh, and uh, I find this particularly interesting um, because this is a third person view of the character. Uh, when you're playing through the game, there's a constant conversation. What are you seeing? But they've decided to put uh, the character visible so that you're uh, essentially um, you're essentially puts the player character uh, in a continual conversation with the environment. Uh, but the, it also keeps the subject of the story front and center, which is it's it's just a, an interesting way to think about how they are using this um, you know pretty simple guide as to get like um, uh, you know keep you involved. Uh, delete that. Um, so next, uh, that's that's one strategy. This lower thirds uh, using the rule of th lower third, not lower thirds. Sorry, the rule of thirds. I'm not sure how many times I've said lower thirds instead. Uh, but there's another uh, strategy I want to talk about, and that's composition. Uh, uh, sorry, iconic composition. Uh, here we have Rene Magritte's The Son of Man. Uh, and this one is uh, just to talk about iconic composition. Uh, if you place uh, an, a, an X or a cross right in the middle of the uh, canvas um, and putting the subject right in the middle of the frame, that is essentially iconic composition. We're not going to talk too much about this because uh, I feel like this one's like an innately... Whenever, uh, whenever you start to draw something, you're like, I, I'm putting it in dead center in the page. Whenever, I mean, I, I feel like that's a very like common thing to do. Uh, doesn't make it less, uh, doesn't make it less acceptable as a strategy because uh, it can be very dramatic. Uh, it can uh, give you real clarity of message. Uh, for this example, we do have other things going on here, uh, and this is a good example of uh, mixing and matching here. Uh, if we break this, I'm going to hide these lines. If you kind of break this down into thirds, this focal point still lands. It's in the middle, but it still lands on a third. So again, these guides, they're, they're not like you have to do one or the other. You can mix and break all the rules, but kind of learning about where to place things is what this is all about. Um, let's just delete all of that. Uh, our next one is really simple. Uh, this is another uh, Wes Anderson film, Moonrise Kingdom, and this is saying, hey, look at my subject, it's in the middle of the frame. Uh, and it's very dramatic, this is a very dramatic scene, um, or, or, for, or as far visually it's, it's dramatic. Uh, and then getting to the next, this is a, uh, a, a prime example of iconic composition. Um, because this led, this is dead center of the frame. This is Stanley Kubrick's Shining. Uh, there is a grid that goes along with uh, iconic composition. Uh, if you cross the middle of the frame and then you make crosses in each segment, you kind of see where this is going. This triangle. Uh, these these triangles, this diamond shape in the middle, uh, if anything lands in here, that is essentially the kind of guideline for the iconic composition. Um, but again, I feel like this one's a little bit simpler. Um, uh, so like I was saying, this is not really a recommendation. This is just an approach uh, to what, uh, you know, to get your own composition started. Um, uh, 
So uh, that's going to do it for our examples, but I want to take a minute just to, uh, you know what, maybe we'll leave one of these examples up. Uh, I want to take a minute to say hi to chat. What's up, everyone? How's it going? Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, there's also, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to post you, for you guys a couple of links. Uh, Kyle T. Webster has done a five-part master class um, on composition. Uh, he also did a master class on visual storytelling. I'm going to link both of those. Uh, of course, I can't put both of those in at the same time. Give me one second. So there's the start of the master class. And, uh, but uh, he covers this a lot more extensively uh, in a lot of these same elements. Um, more extensively in those, uh, but I just wanted to make sure we touched on them before moving on to uh, the challenge part of this. Uh, first, before we get going, uh, I want to turn on the thumbnail and show you guys how to make your own uh, guide. It's very simple and is probably the only uh, real technique I'm going to, uh, it's not a technique, it's really, it's really simple. I'm going to uh, come over here and copy our canvas. Uh, you know what? I don't have to copy the canvas. I'm going to undo that. I am going to select the canvas. Then I'm going to press Control or Option and uh, tap down on the canvas to get a selection. I'm going to make a new frame. Uh, I'm going to press Shift, I, Shift F5. You can see my uh, hotkeys now. Uh, we're going to make a little uh, duplicate of the canvas, but here we want to hit Control T and make sure that you are linked for your width and height up here. And then we're just going to select one of the fields and type 33.3, hit Enter, Enter again to lock in the transformation. Uh, you could come in here with your uh, view. And let's see, you can come here to go to view, show rulers, and turn your guides on so that you could drag guides out if you would like. Uh, and you can do this real quickly. I'm not going to use these guides. I just wanted to show that you can do that. Uh, so I'm going to undo all of that. But I'm going to make a new layer and just call it guides or guide or something. Um, and I'm going to deselect so I can use my brush. And I'm just going to draw out these guides. And then we're going to get started with our own composition. And this is going to be the concept part of this uh, while using this, uh, these strategies that we talked about. Uh, there is also a little bit for designers, and we're going to get, get to that. I mean, all of this applies uh, to all, all visual fields. But I will show a quick example of that as well before we wrap it up. Um, I'm going to make a new layer and call this uh, thumbnail, I guess. And then if you press Alt or Option and hover between the layers, you can make a clipping mask. So I'm going to make that with my, uh, excuse me, I'm going to make that uh, available. I think I'm going to turn down the guides slightly, the opacity. Uh, but I want to leave them up just for now so we can see what's happening. Um, you're going to get, see a lot of brackets happening because that's me making my brush bigger or smaller. And yes, I'm going to work in black and white uh, just just for clarity. Um, I've also picked a selection of Cal T. Webster's concept brushes that we're going to use to throw in some texture. Uh, but before we get going on this, uh, the first thing I want to do is to make sure that we're, we're using these little uh, cross sections as guides. I'm going to put a figure right here. I don't know if it looks like a figure right now. That's fine. But I want this conversation to be between this figure and we're going to put a little building or a structure right here. Um, and that's essentially the, the main elements for our composition. Uh, but with that in mind, I'm going to get to work. I'm going to hide our guides and I'm just going to start painting. Throw in a little bit of foreground. 
and I'm just keeping this loose, rough. Uh, add a little bit of sky. I'm going to grab some of these. Uh, oh, don't want that bright. I want to grab some of these texture brushes. Uh, it's probably a little too dark, honestly. And I'm just throwing some texture in. I don't know where this is going to end up. We'll see. Just kind of loosely getting some of this in here. I am working with uh, atmospheric perspective, which is another little compositional uh, way to push things back and bring things forward. Uh, and I'm just I'm just throwing in texture at this point. I'm not really too concerned because uh, I'm going to do most of my work with this little chalk brush. Um, let's go ahead and make this building or whatever this is. Maybe it's a castle. I'm not sure. Not entirely sure where this is going to go, but that's okay. Uh, if you have any questions, this would be a great time uh, to put them in chat. Uh, but I am thinking about my rule of thirds the entire time I'm working on this. Um, because I think I do, I want to use, I think I'm going to use one of the, th the uh, things we saw in the... Um, in the example of the Darjeeling Limited, I think we're going to use uh, like a frame within a frame for this. We don't have a lot of time to, to make this. Um, it's just a thumbnail, keeping it loose, keeping it rough. Yeah, if there are any questions, drop them in the chat. Uh, and like I was saying, I'm about to use the, I think we're going to use the frame within a frame here uh, to make this a little more interesting. Maybe we have, maybe there's a, a like a water element down here. Maybe there's some bright sky situation happening. Um, let's get rid of this over here. So the frame within a frame thing, we've got our guides right here. I think what I want to do, I've kind of done it with where this figure is standing. Um, so let's, uh, let's maybe put this mountain range a little bit lower. keep our eye kind of closed in visually uh, and I'm just scrubbing through here and so the challenge part of this for you guys is just to either make thumbnails using these guides uh, make designs using these guides um, really get into like you know and it can be you know pre-made assets it can be uh, anything that's you know uh, helps you make the composition uh, using these guides and I'm just I'm kind of roughly going through this I'm not really trying to make anything too masterful you can maybe get a little bit more sky in here and not expecting anything like this by the way it's it's whatever you come up with uh, I can't wait to see what you guys come up with I know this is a bit of a different type of challenge uh, really interesting to see who who will participate. Um, maybe this uh, character has like a little staff or something. Uh, oh, and I'm really working very, you, you've noticed probably, very zoomed out because this is just a thumbnail. This is not, uh, I'm not getting in here with any detail really. Uh, I want to keep this um, fairly loose. Um, not to uh, not to be concerned about the detail, really. Just about to get uh, the you know the bigger picture, the broad strokes. We could maybe frame this a little bit more. Maybe put some little tree leaves or something. Something happening. Um, I mean, this is the stuff, I, these are the things I like to do, so it's like, yeah, I could spend all day doing this, 
but we can't spend all day doing this, uh, unfortunately. Uh, maybe we give this character a staff or something. I don't know. I'm not sure that it's quite reading as that, but there is something happening here. Um, yeah, this could definitely be done with, uh, Sam's saying this could be done with basic shapes for sure. Uh, there's actually a really good, uh, I don't know if Sam can find it, but there's a really good, um, uh, Another, another great uh, Kyle T. Webster example of just using uh, selections and creating uh, composition um, from those selections, very broad shapes and such. Um, but you know what, let's not leave out uh, the graphic designers here. I want to uh, kind of wrap this up maybe, I don't know, maybe there's a spire or something sticking out back here. Um, but let's uh, let's leave this alone for now, um, and let's move on to that example. I've got another thumbnail here that we're going. You know what? We can leave that on. It's fine. It's fine. I've got another thumbnail that I've already made a guide uh, for myself. And for any designers out there, uh, you know, let's let's use both of these strategies. I'm going to make another layer uh, and call this. Uh, do the same thing with making this a clipping mask. I'm just going to call this um, thumbnail again. It doesn't matter because this is going to be really rough. Uh, if you thought the other thumbnail was rough, this is really rough. All right. Um, so for designers, uh, make sure I'm on the thumbnail layer. Uh, let's maybe we have a bottle, and uh, this is a really rough bottle. <laughs> uh, and we, I don't know what it's. Uh, it's the latest greatest snake oil. This is what we've got here. So we've got our rough bottle going on, and maybe we put our uh, tagline or info over here, something like it's it's just the snakiest I don't know uh, but we turn our guides off we're you know using the same principles to create you know an ad uh, we can even take this and remove this and you know, let's use our other um, our iconic composition where you just place it dead in the middle dead in the middle and you know you could even bring in your tag over here, over here, but there's a lot more drama, a lot more focus. Uh, so both of them can be used uh, in multiple ways, and uh, it's um, it, again, this is not hard and fast rules. This is just way, ways to do it. Uh, so I'm going to wrap it up there. Um, I want to thank you guys uh, for coming out and listen to this art talk. Uh, at the same time, I want to see who takes up this challenge. Uh, you can make as many or as few thumbnails as you want. Uh, use uh, pre-made assets. Um, um, Creative Cloud Express would be a great way to, to you know, make something for the web or whatever. Uh, but uh, there's uh, tons, of, tons of more content coming up. Uh, if you guys want to uh, uh, join the Discord, just go over to bit.ly slash psdiscord. Uh, and yeah, thanks everybody. Uh, I hope uh, yeah, best of luck on this one and uh, we'll see you guys soon. Have a good one. Bye.